Hello my friends and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the project structure. By default, Android Studio displays your project files in the Android view. This view does not reflect the actual file hierarchy on disk, but is organized by modules and file types to simplify navigation between key source files of your project, hiding certain file or directories that are not commonly used. So you wanna be a professional Android app developer, but you don't know where you should start, what things you should learn, you came to the right place. Welcome to our top bestseller Android app development course, a comprehensive program designed to equip you with the skills and knowledge required to excel in the exciting field of Android app development. So if I go to here to the project, I click on it, I open, I can uh, press Alt plus one to open the project or tab, or I can press on, uh, press on it, okay? I can select different modes, different ways to display the project hierarchy. By default, Android is selected. Sometimes you need to uh, see the project in a project view, Android view, problems or the, uh, the production, packages, the project files, the project source files. You can see how they are nested, scratches and console and others. But we will use Android as top one used mode. And then we are going to see the project when using the Firebase database uh, section. Okay. So we have many parts inside this project structure. We will start with the manifest. Manifest every app project must have an android manifest.xml file which precisely that name at the root of the project source set the manifest file describes essential information about your app to end to the android build tools the android operating system and google play later on when we publish our app to uh, and upload it to Google Play, we will see the importance of the Android manifest.xml file that gives a brief description about the, uh, the permissions that the app needs in order to access protected parts or of the system or other apps. Also contain the components of the app, describe uh, the components of the app, which all uh, which includes all activities services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. This manifest file also gives the hardware and software features the app requires, which affects which, affects which devices can install the app from Google Play. This is a very important file. That we uh, that we gonna talk about it in a uh, uh, in a separate video, and we will see this important file later on we will, when we add the permissions, when we add new activities, when we add a uh, the services, a broadcast receivers, and bunch more things. So later on we will cover it. The Java folder contains the Java source code files separated by package names, including JUnit test code. So you can see the project hierarchy where you can store the classes, the activities uh, in a hierarchical way in packages, folders, and classes or activities. The REST folder. The resources. The res or values folder is used to store the values 
for the resources that are used in many Android projects to include features of color, styles, dimensions, and etc. If I click on resources, I can see it has sub directories here. I think about they are five. Drawable, layout, bip, a MIP map, values, and XML. So let's dive into these folders. The first one is the drawable. So drawable folder contains the different types of images used for the development of the application. We need to add all the images to the drawable folder for the application development. The layout folder. Normally, we store every XML layout file inside the rest dash layout folder inside the layout folder of the resources folder the mip map folder the mip map folders are for placing your app launcher icons which are shown on the home screen in only so this folder is used for the icon for displaying and creating the icon for your app any other drawable assets you, you use should be placed in the relevant or drawable folders as before. So there are two different uh, concepts you should know. MIP map folder is for displaying the uh, and placing your app launcher icons, the icons for your app for the launcher icon for your app. And the drawable folder should contain or contains all the other assets. Okay, all images except the icon of the uh, app, of your app. So the icon of the app it should be stored inside the MIP map folder, and all the other assets from videos, uh, fr from sorry, video images and other assets should be stored inside the drawable. And by the way, if you have videos, you can create a new assets folder. Later on, we will see it in a, a, in a video tutorial about how to display the videos from the local storage. And we will create a new folder called assets inside the resources and paste uh, and place our videos inside it in, uh, and uh, in order to display and play it with the video player. If we move down, we will see the values folder that contains the colors.xml, strings.xml, and themes. Okay, so let's start with the, with the colors.xml. Colors.xml is an XML file which is used to store the colors for the resources. An Android project contains three essential colors, namely color primary, color primary dark, and color accent. If we continue down to the strings, the XML, we find this, uh, this amazing and very important file because well, it's one of the most important as well as widely used values uh, file uh, is the string.xml due to the, its applicability in the Android project. Basic function of this uh, XML, strings.xml file is to define the strings in one file so that it's easy to use same string in different positions in Android project. Plus, it makes the project looks less messy later on we will see this strings.xml folder and we a file and we will see how we can make a translation and localization of your app in different languages using this amazing file themes folder styles and themes on android allows you to separate the details of your app design from the ui structure and behavior 
similar to style sheets in web design. A style is a collection of attributes that specify the appearance of a single view. A style can specify attributes such as font color, font size, background color, and much more. A theme is a collection of attributes that's applied to an entire app, activity, or view hierarchy, not just an individual view. When you apply a theme, every view in the app or activity applies each of the theme's attributes that it support. Themes can also apply styles to non-view elements, such as the status bar and window background. Moving down to the XML folder, we have two files. The backup rules .xml. By default, the system back backs up almost all app data. If your app targets Android 12 API level 31 or higher, you must specify an additional set of XML backup rules to support the changes to backup restore that were introduced for devices running Android 12 or higher. The data extraction rules .xml. Even if your app targets Android 12 or higher, you must also specify another set of XML backup rules to support devices that run Android 11, API level 30 or lower. And the last folder is the Gradle. The Android build system compiles app resources and source code and the packages them into uh, and packages them into APKs or Android app bundles that you can test, deploy, sign and distribute. Android Studio uses Gradle, an advanced build toolkit to automate and manage the build process while allowing you to define flexible custom build configurations. Each build configuration can define its own set of code and the resources while reusing the parts common to all versions of your app. The Android build plugin for Gradle works with the build toolkit to provide the processes and configurable settings that are specific to building and testing Android applications. Don't worry, uh, we, we are going to use this Gradle uh, folder in, ev in every custom or uh, complex applications that uses the uh, third, party, uh, third party libraries and uh, other dependencies. So we're gonna dive into this folder later on